Well, greetings and salutations, Series 7 test takers. This is the Series 7 guru coming to you from my studio in fabulous Las Vegas. The uh, best free supplement to your paid study materials is my YouTube channel. But if you don't have a Kaplan Cubic as a paid supplement, I highly recommend it and the Kaplan Quick Sheets. Uh, you can use my Guru 10 discount code at checkout, and the Cubic comes in about 60 Quick Sheets about uh, $20. For that commercial, Kaplan allows me to give you a free look uh, on Kaplan content. We'll help you with any uh, question from any vendor, just easier if it's a Kaplan question because we can bring it up by the QID. This QID is 126-3969. Uh, Gargantuan Computers conducts a rights offering. So as an existing shareholder in Gargantuan Computers, one of the rights you have is your right to maintain proportion ownership. That means existing shareholders have the first right of refusal on the issuance of new shares. So that's what's going on in a rights offering. You know, we're going to raise additional uh, equity financing through the sale of common stock. It makes sense. The most likely people to provide us the additional financing are existing owners. And not only the most likely candidates, they also have that right to maintain their proportion and ownership. Okay, so it says to its current shareholders at 50. So you should definitely know that... Uh, Rights are short-term and issued below the current market price, right? So even before I move further, I know that if this is 50, the market price is somewhere above that because at issuance, rights are exercised below. That's to give our existing shareholders an incentive to come up with the money. You know, we're passing on to them the savings of not hiring an investment banker. You know, we may or may not have a standby underwriting in place where if our shareholders don't come up with the money, you know, the uh, banking uh, firm will. Uh, we don't know that from this question, but, you know, we'd rather get it from our existing owners. It takes one right to get an additional share. So we have now two. Let me get out my annotation tool. Well, it looks like we've got two key pieces of information so far. We've got our exercise price and we've got our number of rights needed. Now, as many shares as you have, that's how many rights you have. So if I have a thousand shares, I have a thousand rights. And then, you know, the issuer would say it takes two rights or three rights. Here it says one right. I don't have a, a, a right to increase my proportion ownership. I write to maintain it. Uh, again, this is more of a test prep vendor question than what I think you're actually going to see on the test in terms of practical application. You know, what you got to be able to do on the test is contrast rights with warrants. Uh, anyways, whether it's a right, a warrant, or a uh, option, I think a good memory aid device about what can happen to these things is T. They can be traded, they can be exercised, or they can expire. So that's a good way for us to remember what may happen to a right, a warrant, or a um, option. The current market price is 40, or excuse me, 70. So now we have another third piece of information that's very important. Boom. So we have our market price, we have our subscription price, and we have the number of rights needed. It says, what is the value of one right? I would prefer this as theoretical because, you know, it's only really worth what someone's willing to pay you, but, you know, theoretical value of the right. So what is the value of one right before the stock trades X? So in Latin, we have cum, which means with, and X, which means without. You know, I joke, do you uh, have an X spouse? That means you're no longer trading with your spouse attached. Uh, do you have our cum spouse? Or are you still trading with your spouse attached? Magne cum laude, that means with honors, right? So that means from this here, it trades before the X. That makes it a little more, less valuable because that means right now as an existing shareholder, I cannot sell my rights to someone else. So boom, I can't do that until it starts trading X. Okay, so the formula for this is going to be market price minus subscription price. Well, let me get a smaller font so we can fit it in there. Again, I don't think there's other math. You know, I have a whole thing, all the math that's necessary to pass the seven. Please note, necessary. I didn't say it's all the math on the seven. Uh, and the reason I don't have this in there is because I, who knows, I maybe I do have it in there, but I don't think you're going to have to do it. So, you know, and that makes sense. What we're saying here is that uh, being able to buy the stock at uh, 50, uh, 50 when the stock's at 70 is worth uh, 20 points. And so that piece of this equation is going to be $20. All 
Okay, so the next part of the equation is we're going to divide. If you can't remember what to do on your series seven, you should divide. And if you can't remember what to divide, take the first number and divide it by the second number. And so if this was trading X, it would be divide by the number of rights needed. But since it's trading cum, we're going to have to add one because now we can't you know, do this without having actually having the stock. So it would have been one if it was X, but it says before the X. So it's going to be one plus one, right? The one was given. If it had been two rights and we'd add one, it'd be three. If it was four rights, we'd add one, it'd be five. And then when we get that part, we get two. And so now it looks like we can solve. We're going to do it. We're going to take the $20. We're going to divide it by the two. And we're going to find out that these rights in theory, I wish it said theoretical, but you know, oh, well, is going to be worth uh, $10. And then remember, you can decide to exercise. You want to exercise your right. You would, uh, if you had a thousand shares, for example, you would send in a thousand times 50. You send in $50,000 to the rights or transfer agent and you will have maintained your proportionate ownership. And then once they go X, you could actually trade them uh, to someone else. And so, boom, uh, $10 is the correct answer uh, to this question. Again, I hope you found that was helpful. And uh, remember, you can also, uh, you know, yeah, I think you should be kind of have a good idea. Remember, I said the big test thing is to be able to contrast this with uh, warrants. But, uh, you know, I doubt it. Now, if this was uh, not Coombe rights, if this was X, then it'd be 20 divided by one, it would be, the answer would be 20 instead of 10. So again, I think this is more of a test prep vendor exercise than something you're actually gonna encounter on your uh, exam. But by way of review, you should be able to piece out some of this information. So I don't know where the person got lost on this, but what I mean by that is you should have been able to pick these things out the 50 is the subscription price, one right needed plus one right. That's what that means. Language on the test is atrocious, right? That's what that means. And then we said you can trade it, exercise or expire. The stock's at 70. And so you should have been struggling that being able to buy the stock at uh, 50 when the stock's at 70 is worth 20 points. I remember, I can't make you participate. It's uh, trades before the X. So that means we have to add one. So then we take that boom, boom, boom. And we come up with uh, $10 of the answer. Okay, so remember, inch by inch, your Series 7 is a cinch. Yard by yard, your Series 7 is hard. And I'll see you for the next explication request. If you have any further questions about uh, rights, just put it in the comment box. I'm more than ha happy to you know, answer further questions.